What is going on everyone, it's Justin here and welcome to a tour of a home office or filming studio. And this is actually my parents' basement. I used to rent it from them and I also expanded it into a podcast studio in the secondary room, which I'm also gonna show you, but I actually just purchased a office that I'm setting up in the next couple months. So this has been the spot that I used for a few years while I was living here as an office and also came back to film. And recently I just decided to really clean it up because we weren't using a lot of the desks in the middle of the room, just emptied out, give it a fresh coat of paint, have some furniture here that is gonna be shifted over eventually, but just kind of freshen it up and give away or reuse a lot of the tack and furniture that we had previously for setup makeovers. So in this video, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys around, talk about the furniture, a lot of which is from Article, and everything is gonna be linked below on the furniture, the tech side, and also the paint color, because I get asked about that a ton. It is called Gray from Benjamin Moore, but I just want to give you guys some inspiration of some office tech, some furniture pieces that I enjoy, and also some ideas for setting up a YouTube studio and building as many different dimensions or sets within a room that is about the size of a guest bedroom. If you guys would like to win one item from this video for your office or desk setup, just make sure you follow me over on Instagram at justin.tse, subscribe to the YouTube channel, drop a like on this video, and leave a comment down below with your Instagram username, and also please follow my podcast Instagram page as well. I also have another setup makeover episode that is coming up, I'm editing it right now, and I can tell you the prize for that video is going to be awesome. As always, I'm going to have all the products linked down below, but without further ado, let's just go ahead and get started. So beginning with this side of the room, this is probably the area that I've used the most, even though we haven't used it for like every single video, or at least as much as I've worn this hoodie. But I think it is like a mix of modern and vintage because I've always wanted a brown couch. I think it just adds some nice contrast and some color because other than that, everything is sort of the same tone. The chair that I'm sitting on is from Article and I think it just has like this nice classic look. It has like that walnut finish on the legs as well. Super comfortable if I'm like sitting here for 30 to 40 minutes doing an A-roll. And beside me, I just have a side table and also a typewriter that I picked up from a local vintage shop for like a hundred bucks. And I think it matches a lot of the products over on that shelf in the back. If you guys are wondering where those shelves are from, I actually picked them up off Wayfair. There's many brands that make very similar ones. The real one is from CB2, which I have over in my condo. But the reason why I went with these is because they were way cheaper than the CB2 ones. And even though they had like a weird wood finish, I decided to wrap them with 3M Dynock manually uh, for each shelf before we put it together and just gave it all a matte black look, put two side by side and started out with some props that were gray and eventually added some color. And I feel like that's kind of the way to go with. You find one base color or in this case, a neutral color. And from there, we added some books that were red, yellow, and just whatever can add a bit of tone and personality because that is something that I usually struggle with when designing a room. Overall, I think those shelves look really good. So if you just want to add some shape to the office and something that might look a little bit seamless, like a set of ladders, then going with a knockoff one over on Wayfair is probably the best option. But if you want something that is really high quality, then of course the CB2 one might be worth the money. So I think it's been many years since I talked about this setup, maybe even five years, and I feel like I still get some questions about the previous one, even today. And the setup is just an Ikea desk. They're like $30, and I've got like the legs that are also attached to it that are wheels, can shift it around anywhere in the room. I just like to have as many things as possible on wheels. And when it comes to the overhead set, we use this up until about the start of this year, just because the camera got much heavier and I don't really trust it. But it is just a set of mini tech uh, metal pieces that are beamed Together that Larry Dickerson made and the setup right here is just a sliding piece that has a Manfrotto plate which is the same one that I use with my tripod so I can just pop it off the tripod stick it on here and I've got the perfect overhead and that is connected via HDMI to this $99 uh, monitor that I picked up at Best Buy and I just have it on an Amazon stand that it was $20 from Vivo that we use a lot for setup makeover. But from there, I'm able to monitor everything that is on the camera and just do my overhead without anything being in the way. The bench right here is also from Article, and I just like the fact that I can easily just slide it underneath the table whenever I'm not using it. It is super wide and versatile. So if I wanna do like an overhead B-roll, which is extremely popular in any industry, not just tech nowadays, then I can just turn around and, uh, but this right here just goes very well with the color of the room. It almost matches the wall color. Uh, it is in a dark gray, and the walnut finish is continuous throughout all the furniture in the room. 
With overhead setups though, there are so many ways to do things uh, and one of the biggest priorities is to one, keep it out of the way and two, cut out any shadows from like tripods and everything. So I would say the, the essentials are to have a monitor and to set up a stand that can be easily moved around. In this case, I have them screwed in and if I want to take it out, I just need to unscrew it and it works as a regular desk. So here we are in the podcast setup, and as I said, this is probably the area that I'm most excited about. And with this whole like stay at home period over the past couple months, it's gonna be a good time to do things that I've wanted to do for a while, but either had an excuse not to, or didn't have much time to. And one of them was a podcast. For those who don't know, it is about business, tech, sports, fashion, and just all the things that I enjoy that I may not talk much about on YouTube in more of a raw and detailed form. Some stories and opinions that I have to give about business when starting a YouTube channel at age 12 and turning it into a full-time business, dropping out of university, and I also have a ton of guests coming as well as some friends who have come on the show already, and we talk about some of the funny things that happen on press trips and everything. So if you guys are interested, I'm gonna drop a link down below, and I would really Really appreciate it if you guys went and take a listen. Leave a review over on Apple Podcasts. I also have it on Spotify, Google, and many other platforms. We also have a YouTube channel for it for the visual side because I really want to focus on that. And also an Instagram page with snippets and cut downs from the podcast and our guests. So when it comes to the podcast setup, everything circles around the Rodecaster Pro. They sent this out to us and it has been amazing. We can have all of our inputs with multiple guests. We can also plug it into the computer and have the computer stream come in. You can even have phone calls via Bluetooth. There's special effects and optimizations that are built in to improve the sound of voice, it records the SD card, just everything about it is so intuitive and even though it is on the higher end, if you're serious about podcasting, this seems to be a very popular one that I've seen around. As someone who was pretty new to podcasting, all I had to do was look at some YouTube videos on how to use the Rodecaster Pro, and honestly, it is everything that I could have ever imagined in one system. The headphones that we used to use are from Blue, but I personally switched over to the Shure Clear Earbuds. They're just way more comfortable and honestly look much better on me than these giant headphones. And for the microphone, we use what is sort of like an industry standard radio microphone, which is the Shure SM7B, but I'm still trying to decide if I like the sound of that or the microphone that I'm using right now. This microphone is one that you definitely do not need if you're just starting out, but I got a good deal on mine and a friend had a couple laying around. Honestly, most microphones with the proper setup and a pop filter will sound very, very good. One thing that you do need with this microphone that adds appropriate gain though is the cloud lifter, which is also a couple hundred dollars more and just adds to the entire setup. The tubes that I have in the back that give it like the nice floating LED effect are from Nanlite and these are ones that are battery powered, they last multiple hours, you can set the brightness, all the RGB colors and white balance settings. For lighting, I just have a couple soft boxes with a grid but thankfully my parents basement has lighting coming in from one side so you have that very nice gradient on the wall. The slat wall that is in the back of the set was made by a friend because I'm personally really bad at painting and just making anything out of wood so I just showed him some pictures and he did a perfect job. I also had a neon light made by a Toronto company called Fused Neon and just sent them a logo and they were able to make a great light that is also adjustable in terms of brightness. You can also pick different colors but in this case I think the setup looks awesome and I still need to install it but as you guys can see I was able to get a custom design very quickly. But before I go ahead and show you guys the remaining portions of the room and what I've decided to add, I'd like to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of this video, Roborock and their new S6 robot vacuum. Having Asian parents, even though I am renting this from them, they are super crazy about keeping the place clean, uh, keeping stuff off the floor, dust, and all that kind of stuff. So having this robot vacuum clean up the entire basement is very handy. And as you guys can probably tell, there are still like wires everywhere. And this vacuum does a really good job of sensing the area and also mapping out the entire room. This is all thanks to the LiDAR stereo setup of cameras that are built in that allow it to intelligently sense better than any other robot vacuum that I've seen to date. For example, as it navigates the room and maps everything out, you will be able to notice that something did pop up and it has told me that there is actually a shoe in the room, which in fact there was. Wires have also usually been a problem with robot vacuums, but in this case it also knows where the wires are and knows to avoid them whenever it gets near it, so it doesn't get stuck. As it is cleaning the room, it does a very good job of mapping out the areas around it and the surrounding rooms. And what's also nice is that it can also map out separate rooms and floors and allow you to also manually set different zones. 
The color zone split map automatically identifies different doorways and rooms, and the multi-level mapping system automatically recognizes different levels of the home based on the stairs and allows you to set different settings depending on the materials. So for example, if the upstairs is hardwood floors, you can set it to a lighter setting and more powerful ones for carpet. There's also a mop function that can be installed, so if you have tiles or hardwood, you can just slide on the mop, fill up the water reservoir, and set the amount of water you want it to release when cleaning. This allows it to mop the floor after it has vacuum cleaned the area, and you're also able to remove it and change the water and the mop without having to flip the robot vacuum over. This new generation Roborock S6 Max V is 25% more powerful than the previous generation, so if you guys want to check it out for yourself, I'm going to leave a link below along with a discount code for your purchase. But now we're back on this side of the room and I would say this is sort of like the main wall and in terms of the modifications that I made to the wall, it was just a different shade of white and gray. So previously the white just seemed to have faded into like a red undertone, whereas the gray had a bit of a blue undertone and for filming I kind of wanted the most neutral colors as possible and if I wanted a tint I would add it in the post production. So I went with Chantilly Lace for the wall which is the same white that I used for my entire condo. Very white, I think it just has one drop of gray so it is as close to white that you could possibly get and for a lot of people I would say that that is probably too white but if you're building like a filming studio then that is a really good type of color to go with um, or lack thereof and the wall itself is using Benjamin Moore's color called gray and this gray is rather neutral and what I like about it is that it is dark but at the same time with light hitting it like you see right now it does give off kind of like a light gray look so it isn't too dark but at the same time it has a lot of contrast from the white obviously on the side of things I just have like that Monaco Grand Prix thing in the back add some color matches the hoodie and I love Formula One as you guys can probably tell on that side but I just use an IKEA frame and I think for the price of like I think $10 the IKEA Reba frame is a great deal the couch that I'm sitting on is one that I think is good not only for an office uh, filming studio but even just like a college apartment or bachelor pad because it is really small and it has space for two to three people to sit on and I have it in like a gray color here the fabric looks really good you also have the walnut finish on the side and I believe it also comes in leather as well from article So I'm personally a big fan of this and I find that when I'm sitting in front of the camera and talking like this The casual setting just does much better on a couch as opposed to sitting on an office chair Which we do most of the time so as we shift around a little bit more, here is a TV in the back. And you're probably wondering, why does there have to be a TV in here? And quite honestly, the reason why I picked that TV up is for like a future office setup where we have like a set of desks in the middle and a TV at the end to be able to display stuff on a large screen. I've also always wanted to build a Formula One driving simulator setup. And I feel like a TV like this will go very well with that. Just place it in front and it is called the Samsung Serif. It's 55 inches and the reason why I bought it is because I found it on Amazon Marketplace in Canada for under a thousand dollars which is more than 50% off its original price. It does have a bit of a crack on like the plastic frame but a little bit of super glue doesn't hurt anybody and as you can see that looks awesome. It's just a video that's playing right now, but for any like minimalist setup, I think a TV like this is perfect, but I wouldn't really say it's the best TV to put in the middle of your living room unless you really wanna go with like the most minimal and unflexible setup possible. If you guys are wondering why there's no closet door, it's because the doors seem to take up quite a bit of space when you're trying to open them. And in order to maximize the amount of storage and fit the shelf in there, I decided just to take them out and put an industrial shelf that I picked up for, I believe, $100 from Canadian Tire. And I think those are just perfect for placing gear, extra parts, and uh, also some paint, obviously. And I left the extra space open right there to put some of the lighting equipment, tripods, and things that just don't really fit on the shelf that well. Uh, the only other thing that we're really missing is the soft boxes and usually I would have a large dome in the middle of the room as our key light and also a few other aperture lights that go along the sides to fill it in but because we're walking around and showing you guys around this room I decided to take it out just to save some space. So on this side, you guys might recognize this iMac from my initial setups and I use it kind of as like a wallpaper for the background and a little bit of administrative stuff, but I picked it up on, I think Craigslist for a really good price because someone was like moving out of the continent. And yeah, I think it's a 2011, the iMac 27 inch and I use it just like for editing notes, quick research and emails because all the other work is done at my own place. 
I just have it on like an Ikea kitchen cart and I think it's like the perfect size right here. It just stays out of the way. It is a standing setup so you can just go up to it and use it. And below that I have an Ikea plant that I just use as like some B-roll pieces and we also have a Grove made stand. But if you guys are looking for like a good office cart or even just for your kitchen, then I think these Ikea options are relatively affordable and work great. So last but not least is the Ikea Alex drawer and I used to have four of the desk drawers and we gave them all away for the setup makeover but I kept one last one right here that is a dark gray and matches the room very nicely and this is where I house just some camera accessories and stuff that I might need and I have this Google Hub Max that is here with the date and some calendar stuff. Nothing too much but it also works as a b-roll set if needed and I used to have this actually where the iMac is but it fits well right here and otherwise the rest of the room is filled with lights and we will shuffle things around depending on what type of look I'm going for. So I think the main takeaways of transforming a kind of messy office that had a lot of random stuff laying around to kind of a minimal space for filming is that I want to switch everything to wheels. Easy to shuffle around, lights easy to move around just to have it nice and versatile and keep it as open as possible because camera lights and equipment do take up a lot of space. So the reason why I left this portion to the end of the video is because honestly the transformation is not that large. It was just a process of taking everything out that I didn't need, using it for some of the setup makeovers. As you can see my friend Bryce here who was in the episode earlier this year, we were able to use all of these Alex drawers. After clearing out the room completely and selling some of the stuff I didn't need or giving it away, the first step was to just paint the room. And even though the colors of white and gray are ones that I like, it was sort of a different shade that I was going for with more of a monochrome look for filming. There were quite a few holes in the wall from the shelving and some of the stuff that I put in and because at the time I was still in the process of shopping for a dedicated office space, I decided that I just wanted to empty it out and eventually when I move everything out it will be ready to be a spare bedroom again. So as you guys can probably see we went with a darker shade of grey that still isn't too dark but in most situations it has like a nice rich tone to it that contrasts the white. The white walls use Chantilly lace which I also use for my condo which is pretty much like a pure white and for the walls I use grey from Benjamin Moore. The only other kind of DIY project was actually wrapping the shelves that I picked up on Wayfair which had this wood finish that didn't look that good. These ones are actually way cheaper than kind of what I would call the real version from CB2 but with some 3M Dynoc thanks to Dbrand we went ahead and installed it each one by one using a squeegee and a hair dryer and it actually turned out pretty nicely. So there you have it, after a lot of installing we have two matte black shelves that are ladders, they blend into the wall nicely, have a bit of contrast and can house a lot of accessories and props. But otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching this video of a tour of kind of like a home office or also a podcast studio in my parents' basement. And like I said, I'm working on our dedicated office in the next couple months as it goes through renovations. And I'll see you guys in the next video.